What's going on guys? Troy at Mountain Man Treasure here and I'm on the road. Mountain Man. Mountain Man. Treasures. Welcome into the channel, guys. My name is Troy. I am a part-time reseller based in Montana, I guess southwestern Montana, if you're sort of trying to picture the map. And I am on the road. I do this part-time. I work in the mornings and then afternoons at a radio station. And then after that, it's time to hunt for treasure to sell on eBay and then make YouTube videos about it. And I took the afternoon and then tomorrow off, tomorrow being Friday, if you're watching this day of, that is today. YouTube time is weird. Um, I am on my way to the 50 mile garage sale. Now, you might think, how many garage sales could that possibly be in Montana? And it's a fair point. Right now, at least the people that have actually registered with the event, we're looking at 130 locations, and some of those locations do have multiple uh, multiple vendors, multiple people at them. Um, this is set up a little bit as a, a festival, almost. There are what they call hot spots, and in those hot spots, which seem to be sort of city centers and that sort of thing, uh, there are supposed to be multiple sales, uh, food trucks, sometimes music. There's supposed to be a lot of stuff going on in these different locations. Now these 50 miles, um, we're headed down through the Bitterroot Mountain Range. It's gonna be pretty rural Montana. We'll get some good video probably of some scenery so you can see a little bit of Montana as we make this adventure. But all the little towns all down through there have sales. While I'm heading over there, I'm gonna tell you what's sold. That's what we're going to do. We're trying to make uh, best use of my time here. And otherwise, I wasn't sure if I'd be able to get a video for you tomorrow. So I wanted to put together a video. So we're going to record it as I'm driving up to Missoula and tell you what's sold in my store over the last little bit. Now, it has been slower for sure. Uh, the slowdown has hit. Now, I'm also getting a little bit of, you know, I, I put my store on vacation when we went to Vegas. I'm putting my store on vacation again this weekend. That certainly has an impact, and I think I'm seeing a little bit of that. Now, the first thing that sold is this guy. This is Ken, the Ken doll from Barbie, as Edward from Twilight. I picked up two of these at a garage sale here recently. It was the Buffy sale. We're, 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 making, we're gonna make a lot of money off of that sale. That one book alone, when it eventually sells, is gonna be like 750 bucks. Uh, unbelievable sale and we sold this guy this is the second one that sold the other one went to I believe Thailand and this one staying in the US it sold for $14.73 plus shipping now the next thing that sold right here this is an old Los Angeles Raiders t-shirt this is logo 7 is the brand name Keep an eye out for Logo 7. Uh, it's a, a pretty desirable brand if you if you find it for shirts, for hats, that sort of thing. Uh, this was a great pickup. I paid a dollar for this at a garage sale this summer, and it just sold for $40.19 plus shipping. Really, really nice sale there. That one headed down to uh, somewhere in California. I can't remember exactly where, but it is headed back to California. And then we sold from the uh, the big box that we got from Shop Goodwill. I already sold a Christmas brooch, guys. I listed a dozen of them, something like that, to get started. Still got lots more to list and haven't gotten to the rest of those yet, but I, I listed some and one of them sold right away. This vintage Christmas tree sold for $9.98 plus shipping. So now We've just got to make another 90 bucks and we're paid off. I, I'm not worried about it. We are definitely going to make money off of that purchase, but more likely than not, it's going to have to wait until around the fall. This is uh, one of the medals. I had, uh, I think five of these, and this is the first one to sell. This is an order of the bath. This is a British uh, accommodation, accommodation, commendation. That's what we wanted to say. It's a British commendation, uh, pretty cool little thing, and it sold for $7.99 free shipping. Not a whole lot of money on those, but we're making our money by selling volume on these silks. And 
then I sold these from uh, my sister. She had these. She wasn't using them. Said, hey, can you sell them? We did right here. These Mishi. You remember Mishi, the magnetic purses? Uh, I sold some of the shelves. Now, these are off the little mini purses. These aren't as high value, but if you can find some of the older, like the bigger purses, some of those, the shelves do still sell for pretty decent money. And these I lauded together to make it a little bit more appealing, and they did sell to Australia. So we got $52 and change, 52 Australian dollars. That's about 75 cents US. So we do, uh, at the end of it all, I think we make about 20 bucks. So uh, we'll split that. My sister gets uh, gets half of that, and we get half of that. Nice little sale to Australia. And then we did sell two more silks. These are birds, and I think these went to a customer that I've sold several of them to. I have a couple people that keep coming back in and buying some more. So I uh, made a deal on these, $8 a piece. He bought two of them, so $16 free shipping on these they weigh like just over an ounce so it's, it's pretty it's pretty cheap ship to uh to send out and then we sold another ken doll this is ken as spock and if you find these in the box they sell for like 40 bucks so loose i figured why not grab them i they were listed at five dollars a piece at the garage sale but of course i bundled stuff up hard to say what i actually paid for these let's call it four bucks and this guy sold for 23 dollars and 44 cents plus shipping. So pretty happy with that sale. And then we sold a video game. This is Surf's Up for the Xbox 360. And it sold for, looks like $19.76. Free shipping, but I think these games typically, they're like five ounces, something like that. So again, pretty cheap ship. And then we sold this really cool Montreal Canadiens hat. I'm pretty sure this one came in the bulk a lot that I bought from Aaron over uh, at the thrift store. I paid, uh, I think it was 60 bucks for a couple of totes full of hats. I still have some that I've got to get to, but uh, I have listed a good number of them. And this one sold for $16.39 plus shipping the Habs still in the playoffs. So uh, this was the time that that thing was going to sell. Pretty nice pickup there from Aaron. Good sale. Then we sold some Nike shorts. These vintage Nike with the swoosh on them sold uh, for an offer. I think I had them listed around 20 bucks, like $19 and change. And I got an offer of $17 and I took that. So $17 plus shipping on these. Then we sold a belt buckle. This is Northwest Transport. I've had this one for quite some time. So when I got an offer for this one, jumped on it because I hadn't had the much interest in this particular buckle. This from a sale, I think really early this summer where I bought a whole bunch of buckles for about two bucks a piece. Uh, belt buckles, vintage brass belt buckles, they are a pretty steady bread and butter, meat and potatoes kind of item. Uh, most of them you're not going to get a lot of money on, but they do tend to sell okay and they're easy to, to list and to store in a ship. Uh, you're going to get about uh, 10, 12 bucks, maybe 15 bucks a piece uh, for them. And they are a little bit longer tail. Then we sold some more of the silks and these going out to a viewer of the channel these went out to Allie she picked up uh, a set of them she picked up a bird she picked up a butterfly I think the butterfly was a Tokyo cigarettes and a uh, really cool look on that one sort of he kind of had a like a watercolor type of look to it and then she picked up the Mexican crested dog which looks like I had a typo in that listing and she still found it and liked it she said she might put these in a frame in uh, her, her craft and nook in her little area. She picked a trio of good ones. So Allie, uh, thank you so much for coming in the store. I think these are gonna look fantastic. And they sold for $34.69 plus shipping on those. Then really the best sale that we've had because we have, we've had a fair number of sales, but they're the lower dollar items that are selling right now. We did have a really nice sale. This, you saw it on uh, the thumbnail of a recent video. I don't even know how to say it. I don't sell, you know, the, the breakable stuff very often, the, the porcelain, ceramic, all that stuff. I don't mind selling it. I just don't know much about it. And so I don't I don't pick it up that much. Don't sell it a lot. But I knew this name was familiar. Picked it up, got it home, turned out this is pretty good. I paid $2 for it and check it out. This little elephant, it's a ladro or yadro or I don't know. It comes from Spain. Their stuff sells very well and it sold for $80.40. 39 cents 
plus uh, shipping. This going to an, uh, I think it's an FPO. APO is Army Post Office. FPO, I think, is where this went. This going to uh, a, a naval uh, post office box. So it goes to, I think, California first and then flies to wherever their location. Now, they do have uh, a two-letter abbreviation on the end of any of the APO, FBO, that sort of thing, uh, of the address. And this one was AE. I looked that up, and that is Allied Europe. So this going uh, ultimately probably overseas somewhere. So really cool sale on this little elf, and I definitely packed that thing really well. wanted to make sure that it makes it to its destination. Then we sold and uh, this one also going overseas, but actually an international order. This uh, Dragon Ball Z uh, jersey shirt kind of thing. It was a youth shirt, but it would have worked like as a women's small or extra small. I can't remember. Uh, this one, I tried it at auction a couple times. I picked up watchers, just didn't sell. So I listed it as buy now. And eventually this one did sell. And it's going over to Chile. I, I, I've sold like one thing a week for the last three weeks to Chile. I, I don't know what's going on, but all of a sudden, we're on a hot streak over there. So that's pretty cool. We sold this for 4809 Great British Pounds. Didn't do the math, uh, but I would guess after fees and after shipping, we're going to make about 40 40 bucks, something like that. So that a pretty nice sale. And then I sold to a member of the Reselling Resource Center. This is Matt bought this shirt. This from our bulk shirt pickup at a garage sale. Uh, I don't know, maybe it was a month ago now. Really cool tie-dye kiss concert t-shirt. Uh, Matt sent in an offer and I accepted a $15 plus shipping. So Matt, thank you so much for the purchase. This is a really cool shirt. And then this one is the quotation soak. This one sold for $4.74 plus shipping. And that's something off of a video you haven't seen yet. You'll see it eventually. Uh, this one actually was uh, on the Mountain Kid Cam. She uh, she needed to, she needs to get some hours for Driver's Edge. She's got to build up 50 hours of drive time with a, uh, a, a licensed person. I think at this point she is working her way up to almost 18. So she's getting there, but she wants to build up those hours and she likes to go garage sailing sometimes. So she came with me this past weekend and said she would drive me around as long as she got to do the camera. I haven't seen the footage yet. I don't, I don't know. I'm used to wearing it. I know what that footage looks like. Not sure what we're going to get from the mountain kid cam, but she videotaped this last weekend. And this last weekend is where we picked up this off of our very first stop. And she had a whole bunch of hardcover Stephen King books. And they're usually pretty good. This one sold pretty quickly. Same day, I listed it within uh, an hour or two, actually. And I'd never heard of this one. It's not super old. It's 10 or 12 years old. It's uh, Lisey's story, Lisey's story. I, I don't know. I hadn't heard of this title. But it sold for $21.99 plus media mail shipping. That was a great pickup because I think we paid the lady like 40 bucks for everything. And we loaded up there. We actually made quite a lot of money at that sale. I mean, you're, that one was a good one. That one is going to go down. And then the one right after that, we got a set of blow molds for three bucks. So then after that, three more of the Silk Sangs, I think to the same buyer. He came back, he must have liked the ones that he got and he came back and bought more. So he picked up three of them for $14.22 plus shipping. We're making some good money off those silks. Just a little bit at a time. And then SpongeBob for the win. We sold SpongeBob SquarePants. This is a uh, matchbox play set, I guess. It's a travel set. It collapses and folds in on itself. And I, it seems like it sells pretty well. Picked this up at a garage sale for a couple bucks, two, three bucks, I think three bucks, something like that. And it sold for $19. Then we sold this vintage, their, their cross is the brand, their tax. That's all they are. I picked these up at uh, an estate sale for almost nothing. And this is the second. I think I picked up three different boxes. I just thought they looked cool. I thought people might want to pick them up for uh, display because the box was kind of cool and it was in good shape. And these sold for $9.97. Then a video game. We sold Midnight Club. This $14.73. 
another overseas item now. We sold this Barney toy. I picked this up at a little community sale. Same same sale where I got all of those t-shirts, actually. And I paid, I think, a dollar for this. It was a vintage toy, still new in the box. The uh, And I put it in the listing. You press it. And it's supposed to talk and play music, that sort of thing. And it tried really, really hard. Um, it, it was just the batteries were worn out. But I could tell that it worked because it didn't try to play music. So I said, hey, you know, batteries are wearing out. But testing it, it does uh, try to play something. And this one, I just had to kind of pick a price because there were no others out there. So I had no idea. I priced it a little bit high. This went for thirty-eight, thirty-two. Great British pounds going to the UK. I think we probably make about 30 bucks off of that thing when it's all said and done. So weirdly, guys, there's a fair amount of Barney stuff that sells. I don't know. So if you see it, it might be worth taking a look at. And then I sold this Canadian lure. This thing was really big uh, display piece more than anything else. Uh, Canadian flag on it. I bought this for $5 uh, in a set. They had a U.S. flag and this on it as well. Got it for five bucks. Already sold the U.S. for a little bit more, for like fifteen bucks. Took an offer on this one of twelve dollars plus shipping. So of course that all profit. And then we had some media pushing Daisy seasons one and two. This one came again from the Buffy sale, and we got for this eighteen dollars and seventy-seven cents plus shipping. Then a little retail arbitrage pickup. This from Walmart. And the $5 bin, I picked up a handful of the Scooby-Doo movies. This is Scooby-Doo uh, Season 2 Part 2. Obviously, uh, it's still new and sealed, and it seems to sell pretty well. I think I've sold two of these now. It sold for $15.57 plus shipping. So, you know, we make about uh, 9 10 bucks off this thing. And then I sold a DVD. This I picked up at a garage sale that I stopped at right before we went to Vegas. I went to two garage sales and it picked up a few uh, really pretty small dollar things for the most part, but they were little things. I could take pictures of them real quick before we left and then listed them while we waited in the airport. And this one is super and it sold for $3.99 plus shipping. Tales of Horror, this, the Canterbury Collection, this, another book we picked up this last week, and not at that same sale, I don't think. I'm pretty sure this was one where it was three bucks for a dollar. Mostly, I picked up some uh, J.R.R. Tolkien books, the guy that wrote The Hobbit. I picked up a few of those, and they're all about $10 books, but, you know, why not? Easy listers, and um, they will sell, so I was okay picking those up for that cheap. This one sold for $9.98 plus media mail shipping. And then this one I've had for a while, for about a year. I picked it up last year at a garage sale for a dollar. I picked up several uh, Barnum's tins. I don't think I got any others, just the, the Barnum's animal crackers. And this is one, uh, the flamingo that usually sits behind me. Uh, Mount kid named him Chad. Uh, he, uh, he's been sitting on the uh, Barnum's animal crackers circular tin. It was still new and sealed. And this is the old the old design they don't use it anymore because the animals aren't in the cages and that sort of thing um, so i picked it up for a buck and it did eventually sell this sold for 26 dollars and 79 cents plus shipping so i had to wait a while but really good turnaround then we sold a game lego jurassic world this went for 14 dollars and 34 cents free shipping mr Krabs. SpongeBob stuff, just like Barney, SpongeBob stuff can sell well. I picked this up again this last weekend. She had some SpongeBob plush, and you know, the, this is sort of like Barbie, right? Like the the actual Barbie doll doesn't sell as well as all of her little friends, and so I didn't pick up the SpongeBob stuff, but I picked up Mr. Krabs, and he sold within a couple of days, really. Uh, this sold for sixteen dollars seventy four cents, free shipping. But he didn't weigh that much, and we paid, I think, a dollar for him. So really happy with that quick turnaround on Mr. Krabs. Then we sold another silk quotation, I think, to this same guy. He came back in and bought another one, $4.74 plus shipping. Sold a twin bed skirt. This is still new in the package. Didn't make much on this. I sold it for $16.38. I think I only paid a dollar, though. At, uh, at the thrift store, and they also paid shipping. This 
just barely fit inside a padded flat rate envelope. Uh, something else that sat around for a while, these G.I. Joe pieces. I picked these up probably two, maybe even pushing three years ago now. We picked these up very early. I got a whole box of G.I. Joe accessories mostly. And I think I paid like 10 bucks, something like that. I mean, it was nothing. We made a lot of money off of these accessories. And now I've just got a few stragglers. And these are little plastic splints that would have gone with uh, the medic. When you buy him, he would have had these uh, in his bag and would have come in the package. Um, so I sold a set of 10 of these and they went for $14 and I think it said 91 cents free shipping. So again, something very light and you know, we make 10 bucks or something at the end of it. And these do add up. I, I, I wish we had some more higher dollar sales in the last week or so, but you know, I'm going to take what I can get at this point. We sold another small dollar item. This is an A3 is the brand name. This is a box car for uh, an HO scale train. And I had a watcher on it for a little while and they, nothing was happening. So I sent out an offer, took 50 cents off. Turned out that was what sealed it. So uh, I'm fine with losing 50 cents to move this thing out. $9 and 49 cents free shipping. Couple more. We sold Ken and Spock, the second one that we picked up. This one is gone, $23.44. Plus this time it was international shipping and it went up to Canada. So nice little sale there. That one I think went to Ontario. And then we sold a Game Genie, again from something we picked up this last weekend. And uh, it just, if you've stuck around this long, you deserve to hear it. I, I checked off a bucket list item. And, uh, as we were out this weekend, and actually Mountain Kid found it. Um, what happened, we had actually gone to a sale next door, and as we're there looking at a table, we started on the right end of the table, and we hear just five feet away on the other side of the table, how much for the PlayStation 2? Then, you know, that's bad enough, right? And then we hear, eh, five bucks. What? So that was a bummer. We missed out on that. I still got something at that sale that's going to sell for about the same amount, honestly, but it's just annoying to miss that. But next door, we got there after that guy, and he missed what Mountain Kid found was a box of uh, the original Nintendo, the old NES system. I've been wanting to find that in a garage sale. I did end up paying up for it, but I did it because I got him to throw in some extras with it. And so we can part out the extras and basically pay for the purchase. And then the Nintendo is going to be a hundred percent profit. We're not going to make a lot of money off of it, but it's just something I wanted to find. And now check that one off. We found that one, but the game genie that was with it, we sold that one separate and it sold for $14.73 plus shipping. Those are pretty solid sellers right about that price point. And then the last thing that we sold from, it was actually from that lady we talked about where we picked up so much stuff right away. It was our very first stop, the Stephen King book lady. We picked up some great stuff. I got a Dare duffel bag there. I picked up some joysticks from a flight simulator. I, I, we, got, we did well at that sale. And this is one to watch out for. Hard to read it because it's one of my web interpret listings and it's not in English anymore. But this is made by Tiger. Look for those guys. They make handheld games and a good number of them sell very well. And I've noticed I sell a fair number of my handheld game finds overseas. And this one also went overseas. This one going to Spain, it's lights out. Uh, and this one, it worked. I, guys, I paid 10 cents for this. She had stuff for 10 and 20 cents. I paid 10 cents for this game, this vintage handheld game. She had the instructions with it, a Clorox wipe, and it was good to go. And it sold for 42.11 euros after I pay shipping and fees. I'm gonna make about 30 bucks off of this old game that I paid 10 cents for. So keep an eye for lights out. The sell through rate on this thing is really, really good. And it helped that I had the instruction manual with it as well. So that's what we've sold. I know the video got a little bit long, but that's what we have sold in the last, I think it's pushing a week or so. We've been averaging about $120 a day for the last few days. So it has slowed down, but the sales are still trickling in. So 
it, I, I, are you guys seeing the slowdown? I, I know there are people out there that say, I don't believe in summer slowdown. It's like saying, I don't believe in stop signs. They exist. They're out there. Now, there are things you can do to combat it. So you can say, you know what? I don't believe in letting my sales slow down. I don't believe in ultimately letting it get the better of me. Okay. But summer slowdown is a thing. I mean, not just for all of e-commerce, but especially for eBay. I'll, you know what? This If I get a video together, we're going to talk about some stats because I actually have some stats on this. I might do a short video this weekend talking about some of that because uh, it, it's a thing and it impacts a lot of people. So I hope your sales are doing okay. If they're not, let's talk about what we can do to get those better. Talk about it down there in the comments. So I'm going to continue driving to the 50 mile garage sale. We're going to have hopefully a whole bunch of videos to show you from that thing. And since we have a garage sale season here in Montana, that's a good thing because I'll be able to work into the fall and maybe the winter showing you some garage sale footage, which is really cool. So thanks for joining us today. I sure appreciate it. We're going to let you guys go. I'm going to look at the beautiful Montana scenery. See you next time. Bye.